Uh, I will present the article uh, Privacy Preserving Classification on uh, Deep Neural Network. Um, today, uh, machine learning is widely used in so many fields. Um, for example, it can be found in medical diagnosis, uh, financial um, analysis, or social uh, recognition. For example, I could um, manipulate uh, sensitive data. And this is why today uh, we would like to uh, continue use machine learning while uh, preserving uh, privacy uh, on deep neural network. Uh, today, uh, this article will be used um, to preserve privacy on a deep neural network. Um, first, I will define what is a neural network. A neural network is composed with um, a perceptron. A perceptron takes uh, some binary input and give a uh, one binary output. And like you can see on the picture on the left, uh, each coordinate is associated with a weight uh, WJ. And during the training phase, this weight is learned uh, using a gradient descendant uh, processing. And um, each uh, neural network um, have um, two uh, phases. Is a training phase followed by a classification phase. And during the um, classification phase, you will uh, assignment uh, output for a new input X. And uh, during the classification phase, you will apply the uh, perceptual rules. And the perceptual rules is a linear com uh, combination between the, um, the weight WJ on the coordinates of uh, x. Then you will, uh, you, you will see if uh, this uh, linear combination is uh, greater than or less than a certain threshold. Then you can see with this method, you only perform um, linear classification. In, uh, in practice, you will use a multilayer perception a multilayer perceptron is composed of uh, several uh, perceptrons. And in order to solve a linearity problem, you will introduce a nonlinear activation function, a sigmoid or rectify uh, linear function. This function is applied on each uh, wire. Then uh, a convolutional network is just an um, extension of um, multilayer uh, perceptron. Uh, which added uh, some other uh, layers. You can be found in the convolutional network, a uh, convolutional layers uh, weight sum. Then uh, max min pooling layer, which uh, compute uh, maximum or average values of um, some of the components of uh, feeding layers. And uh, you can be found also uh, activation function like uh, multilayer perception. Then uh, you place yourself in the cases where a uh, convolutional network already trained, and uh, some parameters uh, are fixed. Then the problematic is used with trained CNN uh, in a privacy uh, to preserve the privacy during the classification phase. Uh, more formally, a privacy preserving classification in, is when a client wants to be performed. Um, a classification on the cloud, and uh, you would like this cloud, cloud uh, doesn't get any information about the client's data or um, resulting of the classification. In addition of the privacy, uh, you would like uh, you have to deal. Sorry, you have to deal with uh, two other aspects: uh, efficiency, uh, the running time to obtain the classification need to be low for applied in the real world. And uh, accuracy, uh, the classification performance need, need to be uh, close, the classification performance uh, without the privacy. Then, uh, for solve the problem of privacy, uh, a natural solution is to use um, homomorphic encryption. Homomorphic encryption ensures a privacy thanks to uh, the encrypted uh, data and enable to perform uh, several operations on this encrypted data. 
In practice, uh, the homomorphic uh, encryption, uh, the most costly operation in the homomorphic encryption is the multiplication. And um, uh, the multiplication and the efficiency, the complexity of homomorphic function is equal to the uh, number of multiplication you compute during the, this function. Um, in the cases of uh, conventional network classification, efficiency is approximately equal to uh, number of nonlinear layers times to uh, multiplicative death of uh, these nonlinear layers. Because uh, in the CNN, only the um, nonlinear layers are the multiplicative death. Then, uh, like I said previously, uh, eight multiplicative death layers can be efficiently uh, computed um, with a fully homomorphic encryption. And uh, CNN have two nonlinear layers, a uh, rectify linear function, or the max pooling layers. A uh, recent paper, uh, CryptoNet, suggests to uh, replace the rectify linear function by a square function, uh, low, a nonlinear low degree polynomial function, is a natural solution, is a square function. And uh, we place uh, max pooling layers by a sum pooling layer, which um, have a, nu a null multiplicative death. Then, in uh, to test your solution, uh, CryptoNet use uh, unwritten digit dataset MNST. In practice, uh, CryptoNet has a good performance on uh, MNST for a light CNN. The CNN is composed with uh, nine layers with uh, two nonlinear layers with a uh, multiplicative death equal to one. Uh, they obtain an accuracy equal to 98.95% uh, on preserving privacy uh, using uh, fully homomorphic encryption and yeah, CryptoNet able to perform uh, 40, uh, 41 classification per hour. Sorry. Then, uh, like I said previously, a CryptoNet has a good performance on the light CNN, but what happens when you're dealing with more layers? The more layers is just a deep neural network, and um, for deep neural networks, the state of art uh, teaches that uh, in order to have a good accuracy on a deep neural network, you need a uh, rectify linear function, but the problem of the CryptoNet is replace this function by a square function. Then um, the problem is the square function approximates the rectify linear function only as a small interval. And in addition, uh, due to a uh, central limit theorem, the input of this activation function um, has a normal distribution. And like you can see on this graph, um, the half of the input of the square function uh, doesn't well approximate um, the square, uh, doesn't well approximate the rectify linear function. For well approximate the linear, oh, sorry, um, a linear function within, the square function need to be within the interval uh, zero and min and one. Then you propose is not replace the square function, but approximate this rectify linear function by a low degree polynomial and add a batch normalization before each activation layers. This batch normalization will uh, stabilize a distribution uh, of the activation function input and concentrate um, most of the input on the interval where the activation function is uh, well approximate, approximated. Then, uh, the accuracy of our solution is strongly linked to the quality of the polynomial approximation on the normalized uh, distribution. In practice, uh, to compute a polynomial approximation, you take a several number of a couple x a y a, where x a follows a normalized distribution on y a equal to max zero x a uh, y a. I'm sorry, and uh, in other words, you applied a rectify linear function. 
uh, fin uh, n degree a polynomial Pn, which uh, minimize this uh, equation. On the picture, you can see the distribution of, e of x when you apply the batch normalization, and you can see uh, x uh, follows um, normal distribution in zero on the elements within the interval of minus three and uh, three. Over picture, you can see um, several low degree approximation of the rectify linear function, and you can see with this method, you all use um, have a low degree approximation within the a well approximation of the rectify linear function within the interval of minus three and three. Then, in practice, in order to respect the accuracy, um, during the training phase, we will use a rectify linear function uh, plus batch normalization, and then you can train again in order to have a better accuracy in during the classification, we will use uh, approximation of uh, value function on batch normalization. And then during the classification, we will use uh, approximation of rectify linear function on the batch normalization. Uh, now, to test uh, our solution, we will use MNST2. And uh, for a light CNN with uh, nine layers and uh, single nonlinear layers, uh, layers you obtain accuracy equal to 97.95%. You can see uh, this result is slightly uh, worse than uh, Kryptonet, but in practice, for a more complex CNN or deeper neural network, uh, for uh, a deeper neural network with uh, 24 layers on six uh, nonlinear layers, you obtain accuracy equals to 99.30%. Uh, and you can see you have accuracy um, is too close, accuracy without privacy. And efficiently, you're able to compute uh, 17 classification per hour. And uh, to conclude, um, the most important is that this work allows to um, provide the privacy preserving uh, classification on deep neural network because uh, deep neural network give a better accuracy than uh, light CNN. And uh, you have uh, accuracy is uh, performance is similar uh, than um, non-secure protocol. And the low multiplicative depth of uh, our solution leads the particle efficiency in the real world. Um, now, uh, do you have any question? No. Thanks for your talk. On slide six, if you can quickly six. flip back. Yep. Yeah. So you have your list of of things you need to um, satisfy here. And you have privacy in one direction, but not the other direction. And it's actually tricky to define what you would mean by privacy in the other direction, right? So you have no requirement that the client doesn't learn the model, for example. So a trivial solution is just send the classifier to the client and have the cl client do it. Yeah. Obviously, you don't want to do that, but if the client is allowed to give data and get classifications out, the client can learn the model itself. So yeah. what actually is the privacy requirement in that dire direction? Um, sorry. Um, um, so wait, can you repeat again the question? Okay. So. Here's a, a simple protocol. The server yeah. just sends the client yes. the model, and the client just runs it itself. Yes. Right? Why is that not what you want to do? Um, I want to, um, sorry. Uh, I think they, yeah, from what I understood based on CryptoNet, I think they also want to hide the model. So right. So, I mean, that's not a stated yeah, requirement here. 
But if you want to hide the model, you have a problem because if the client can just submit arbitrary things and get classifications out, yes. the client can learn the model itself. Adapted okay. query. Right? Just by just by using. So what actually is the require the unstated requirement? Is my question. So you mean by adaptively querying many times? Yeah. Yeah, that, that will be dependent, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's, it's a MPC definition and it doesn't Thank you. try to address that, right? Just that whatever you learn from the outputs, the many outputs, it's fair game. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you but the IO is the function, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> In the last um, example that you showed where you can support 17K queries per hour, what's the depth of the network that you get that you need to, to evaluate and what parameters did you use? Uh, what homomorphic encryption parameters did you use? A parameter is written as here. Um, so it's not my heart to go on the. It's not your heart. Yeah. Okay. So oh, I think we okay. have to take the questions offline because the authors are not here. Ah. Uh, that's uh, we, we got to the bottom. Yeah. Oh, All from right. this way. No worries. Okay. Oh, wait. Is that why she Yeah. Well, let's thank the speaker. Okay.